Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern HealthSpan. A recent paper highlighted the possibly impressive HealthSpan benefits of blocking interleukin-11. We did a video walking through the paper and I have linked to that above. In the study, the authors used proprietary antibodies to block interleukin-11 called X203, which is not yet available. Is there any other way to do this? There are some papers which have documented small molecules which inhibit interleukin-11, and I will go through these. Before I look at the supplements, a couple of comments on the studies. They're all animal studies, and they are around specific indications. The aim of these studies is to show that there would be an improvement in the condition by inhibiting interleukin-11. I am not aware of any studies which specifically look at the inhibition in humans. With that said, let's have a look at what they found. Here is what I'm going to cover in this video. First, what supplements have been shown to inhibit interleukin-11? These are the ones that I have found papers for, showing that they can do this in animal models. All of the supplements are grass, generally regarded as safe by the FDA. Omega-3, lutein and zeaxanthin, NMN, curcumin, quercetin, and some other plant polyphenols. I've added CERT1 here, though it is not a supplement, but overexpression of CERT1 has also been shown to inhibit interleukin-11. I will give a brief introduction to the study in each case, but then talk about the parts of the paper relevant to interleukin-11. And at the end, a short review of the pathways of interleukin-11 biochemistry. Interleukin-11 was identified in 1990 and does not seem to have been much studied. I could not find papers specifically looking at inhibiting it, but I did find this paper, which looks at how inhibiting interleukin-11 can help with chronic kidney disease and has a review of some of the possible ways of doing this. I have used this as a base for my research. The first supplement is omega-3, which has been shown to inhibit interleukin-6 and 11 in mice. This was the only paper that I could find that specifically showed this. A quick review of the paper and what they found. Omega-3 inhibits interleukin-6, but it's not clear that it also does this for 11. The study involved injecting mice with APAP, which causes elevated interleukin-11 in the liver and testing to see if omega-3 would reduce this. They used wild-type mice and FAT1 transgenic mice. FAT1 mice have a gene added which allows them to convert omega-6s into omega-3s, something that mammals cannot normally do. So in this case, the mice don't need to be fed omega-3, but can generate it internally. Omega-3 polyunsaturated fats reduced interleukin-11 expression. They did this by inhibiting ERK12. ERK12 activates genes in the nucleus and indirectly one of these is the interleukin-11 promoter. So it's reducing the production of interleukin-11. This shows the expression of interleukin-11 in the liver cells after injection, comparing wild type mice to FAT1 mice. The level of interleukin-11 is much lower in the FAT1 mice, which produce the omega-3 internally. So, a special circumstance and no way to look at dosing, since the omega-3 is made by the animal, but it did reduce interleukin-11 expression. Next is lutein. The paper that I found referring to lutein also mentions zeaxanthin as having similar effects. However, I could not find any studies directly showing that zeaxanthin inhibited interleukin-11, so we will only look at lutein. However, the two often come packaged together as they are both support of eye health, the study was looking at how lutein helped in a mouse model of fibrosis in the heart. This was induced by angiotensin too. In the in vivo part of the study, lutein was able to reduce the cardiac remodeling caused by ANG2, where remodeling is excess growth from fibrosis. Interleukin-11 is known to cause fibrosis, and this is what ANG2 upregulates. Lutein suppressed the interleukin-11 and reduced the fibrosis and other remodeling in the heart. In terms of dose, this was 100 milligrams per kilogram daily. Next is nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMA, in this rat study of traumatic brain injury. The study was looking at the results of traumatic brain injury, or TBI, in rats. TBI causes damage in the brain, 
including inflammation, which in turn leads to further tissue damage. Damping down this inflammation can help reduce this secondary damage. NMN, by raising NAD, inhibits some of the causes of this damage. This includes inflammatory cytokines. Here they specifically mention interleukin-6, 11, and the 11 receptor as the pro-inflammatory cytokines that get inhibited. This shows the interleukin-11 in the brain in the case of sham injury, TBI, or TBI in NMN. And we can see that NMN significantly reduced the interleukin-11. Dose in this case was 43.75 milligrams per kilogram for a rat, so 7 milligrams per kilogram for a human, or 525 milligrams for a 75 kilogram person. And curcumin. The paper mentioned other plant chemicals such as questin and rosmarinic acid should also work, but I could not find any studies with concrete results which looked at them. This paper looked at curcumin. Like the previous brain injury study, this one looked at spinal cord injury, which has a similar problem, yet the initial injury is made worse by increased inflammation. Curcumin is not water soluble and has low bioavailability. For this study, they use nanoparticles of curcumin treated with a technology which makes them much more soluble. They compared the mRNA expression of some inflammatory signal molecules on day one, after the injury, only interleukin-11 was significantly lower in the curcumin-treated animals when compared to those with carrier. However, it should be noted that on day 14, this was reversed and the curcumin group had high interleukin-11. The paper did not comment on this except to note the result, so I'm not sure what to make of it. The last one is not a supplement as such, but rather the overexpression of SIRT1. This study was looking at senescence-associated fibrosis in the lungs in mice and how SIRT1 was able to improve the condition by down-regulating interleukin-11. Interesting that SIRT1 and vitamin D went down with age and activated the TGF-beta interleukin-11 MEK and ERK signaling pathway, which promoted fibrosis in the lung tissue. In the study, SIRT1 was overexpressed genetically Doing so improved the lung dysfunction, DNA damage, SASP, and fibrosis. It did this by down-regulating the pathway, in particular inhibiting interleukin-11. In the kidney paper, they suggest activating SIRT1 with either resveratrol or a ketogenic diet. So that's it for what I have on inhibiting interleukin-11 with small molecules, as there is really not that much research in humans. A couple of points to add. Interleukin-11 is associated with senescence and is a component of SAS, according to Dr. Cook. So reducing the senescent cells may help. It's also part of the same family as interleukin-6, another inflammatory cytokine. Interleukin-6 is often used to measure inflammation, while interleukin-11 is not. It is possible that interventions which reduce interleukin-6 will have the same effects on 11. I wanted to talk about a couple of things related to the inhibition of interleukin-11. So this is the signaling pathway. Interleukin-11 activates pathways in cells through the interleukin-11 receptor, a membrane protein. This joins with GP130. From here, it can activate one of two pathways. One of these is stat 3 jan 2 This in turn can upregulate inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-6, 8, 33, and CCL2. This was the first identified pathway for interleukin-11. It can also activate ERP and P90 risk. These both inhibit LKB1, which is required to activate AMPK. Thus, AMPK is inhibited. AMPK itself inhibits mTOR, so inactivating AMPK activates mTOR and the mTOR downstream processes. There is much more study required for interleukin-11, but listening to Dr. Cook's talks, the main impact on aging from, it, from the inhibition of interleukin-11 is from this second path rather than through the jack stat path. On a podcast, Drs. Cook and Brian Kennedy discussed the possibility that interleukin-11 signaling could be the cause of hyperactivation of mTOR that is seen with age. jack stat is also a very widely used pathway and generic inhibition may not be the best way to mimic interleukin-11 inhibition.
So overall, it seems that inhibiting interleukin-11 itself, rather than the downstream processes, may be a better strategy. And this is the one that Dr. Cook has taken with his antibody solution. I hope that you found this helpful. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.